Peace and blessings, everyone. The Most High, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless us all. We're going to read from 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And we'll read from verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren. So, the Corinthians are the brethren of the writer of, of, of uh, Corinthians, the one who wrote this letter to the Corinthians. Moreover, brethren. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. So, by the will of God, Paul, or Saul of Tarsus, was called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul was called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ himself called Paul into the apostleship. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared unto Paul when he was on the road to Damascus. That's written of in the book of Acts chapter 9. Paul being called to be an apostle or called to be in the apostleship of Jesus Christ. Apostle meaning one that would be sent forth by the power and authority of Jesus Christ, to preach that Jesus Christ is the Lord of Israel, that Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ. That's what, called, that's what Paul was called into, to preach as an apostle, that Jesus of Nazareth is the Christ, meaning the Messiah, the Most High's anointed one. And that was through the will of God. So it was... The will of God for Jesus Christ to call Paul into the apostleship. Any man or woman that the Father by his will brings to Christ is also called. See? Called of who? The will of the Father. So, Remember, we were reading, moreover, brethren, moreover, brethren. Uh, just bear with me here a second. Here we go. Moreover, brethren. So, who, the brethren of who? Paul. The Corinthians are Paul's brethren. What nation did he come out of? So we can understand who his brethren is. Let's read Romans chapter 11. And verse... Let's see. Um, wrote, wrote the book of Romans, which were Israelites that dwelt in Rome, chapter 11, verse 1. So let's get that verse. So Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I'm trying to get this phone steady. All right. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, that's where we at. I mean, Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, 
Hath God cast away his people? Did the Most High cast away the circumcision of Israel? Because many of the children of Israel that were of the circumcision that dwell in Jerusalem, Judea, they stumbled at Christ. They stumbled at Christ. Like Paul himself quoted, this is, or Peter actually in um, Acts chapter 4, the stone which the builders refused has become the head corner. So the question is, because many of the children of Israel, beginning with the chief priests, elders, and scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees, because they rejected the Son of God, does that mean God cast away his people? God forbid, meaning no. For I also am a what? Israelite. See? So Paul himself was an Israelite. So if God did away with the circumcision of Israel that rejected Christ, he's saying, basic, I'm living proof that God did not cast away his people. Remember, Paul was a, one that was persecuting the church of Christ. He said that he persecuted the church beyond measure. He persecuted the church of Christ. He persecuted the believers in Christ, both men and women. He consented unto Stephen's death when Stephen got stoned. So he's living proof that Israel of the circumcision raised the law of Moses and, and circumcised the eighth day and very well acquainted in the law and the prophets that rejected Christ, God did not cast him away. So he's saying, look, I'm an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of what? Benjamin. I'm an Israelite of the seed of Abraham through Isaac and Isaac's son, Jacob, and from Jacob of the tribe of what? Benjamin. So Paul is an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin, the seed of Abraham. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. So the no, the most I did not cast away Israel, and in particular, Israel of the circumcision. Because he himself was of the tribe of Benjamin. He himself was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He was one of the top Pharisees. And when the Lord called him into the discipleship, it wasn't any righteousness that he was doing on his part. It was of God's will and mercy that he sent his son to Paul to bring him into the fellowship and apostleship of Christ. So Paul is living proof that any man can repent because it's not of our works. It's of him that showeth mercy and that's God. See, we just like us, we did what works did we do for the most high to bring us to Christ? What works? We didn't do any works. It's of the Most High's mercy that he called us into the truth, to Christ. So, getting back to the other point we were making, we were reading in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, um, 10, right? We were going into the part about the Paul's brethren, over brethren. Who is his brethren? <laughs> the Israelites. That's who his brethren is. His brethren is not Edomites, Hamites, Cushites, Elamites, Moabites, Israelites. God's people are the children of Israel. And in particular, he's speaking of the circumcision of Israel. Because when we read from Romans chapter 1 through chapter 11 and continuing, we read about Jew and Gentile, circumcision, uncircumcision, Israel, Gentile. And in all those instances, we're reading about 
that, you know, Israel, that many times when he's speaking of Israel, he's speaking about Israel that was of the circumcision, Israel that was raised in the law of Moses, circumcised the eighth day, so on and so forth. And then many times when we read Gentiles or uncircumcision, that was talking about Israelites as well. But they were Israelites that were uncircumcised by the way that in spirit and in the flesh, by the way that they were uh, living their life following the gods of the Greeks and Romans and ancient Babylonians and Egyptians or the gods of the Assyrians, so on and so forth. Gods of Edom, Ishmael. The Greeks and Romans are Edomites. So, but who is Paul's brethren? That's the point. Israelites. So when we read in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, read that again. It says, moreover, brethren, moreover, brethren. So the Corinthians are who? Israelites that dwell in Corinth. A Greco-Roman province during the time of uh, this time the, the the apostles. So let's be clear. Paul is addressing the Israelites as his brethren, and we're going to prove that the Book of Corinthians is talking about Israelites. Let's read on. I'll just try to fix something here. Okay. I would not, meaning I would have you not, that ye should be ignorant. We are not to be ignorant. To be ignorant is when we lack the knowledge of something, when we lack the understanding of something that's important unto us. We're not to be ignorant. And what is that that we're not to be ignorant of? How that all our fathers were under the cloud. How that all our fathers were under the cloud. So remember, he's speaking to his brethren. Who is who? Who are Paul's brethren? The Israelites. And what did he say? I would not that you should be ignorant, meaning unlearned, without the understanding of how what. All our fathers. That's not talking about all nations. Our fathers, meaning our forefathers. Of the children of who? Israel. Were under the cloud. What does that mean? How that our forefathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, meaning the Red Sea. Well, what is that going into? Well, we got to actually read the history of Israel. Then we're going to prove that this talking about the children of Israel and this is our history and we're not to be ignorant of it. Because we're, we're not going to be able to continually go through it in the lesson this evening, but what what we experienced under the cloud when our fathers passed through the sea was an experience where we were all baptized, immersed onto Moses becoming our leader in the cloud and in the sea. See, cloud sea, cloud sea. So there was an experience that our forefathers, the children of Israel, went through where we were all baptized onto Moses which was to foreshadow all of us being baptized unto Jesus Christ. Today, baptized into Christ. Notice how I'm saying we were all baptized unto Moses. There was a baptism where we were baptized unto Moses becoming our leader. A lot of Israelites teach this that, oh, Israel was baptized when Moses gave us the law, statutes, commandments. That's not what that's talking about. 
This is talking about a specific event that happened. We were under the cloud and we passed through the Red Sea. The children of Israel, let's be clear, did not receive the Ten Commandments when we passed through the sea. So how can you teach that this is talking about Israelites being baptized onto the law? The reason why they're saying that is because they're teaching against, well, one of the underlying issues, they teach against the water baptism. So they go to this scripture like to say, we ain't got to get baptized in water because we were baptized in the Moses. How were we baptized in the Moses? When he, we were baptized when he gave us the law, statutes, commandments, law, statutes, commandments. No, that's a precept of men. That's a doctrine of, of corrupt men. That's teaching against the commandment of Christ to be baptized in water. So they'll go to this scripture to teach against water baptism. So there's a lot of layers to idolatrous man worship going on in Israel. And we must be very sober and vigilant and sharp in our understanding to be able to discern this so that we don't follow doctrines of men. So let's actually read the experience of our fathers in the cloud when we passed through the Red Sea, when we came out of Egypt. When we were all baptized on them. How was Israel baptized unto Moses? What does that mean? It's not talking about Moses baptized us when he gave us the law, statutes, commandments of God. Because Israel did not receive the Ten Commandments when we passed through the sea. So instead of listening to uh, uh, men promoting idolatrous man worship to get the understanding of the scripture, we got to go to the scripture to find out how all Israel was baptized in the Moses. So let's get it. Let's go to the book of uh, Exodus. Let's go to the book of Exodus. All right, Israel. So let's get this. Let's go to Exodus. Let's get the scripture where Israel was baptized under Moses. And what does that mean? Because if we were baptized under Moses, <laughs> we're to be baptized under Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the prophet like unto Moses. So let's get Exodus, right? And let's read about how our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the Red Sea. To understand uh, Israel being under the cloud, we're going to go to Exodus chapter 13, verses 20 through uh, 22. And to understand how we all pass through the sea, meaning the Red Sea, we're going to read that in Exodus chapter uh, 14, verse 22. To understand how we were all baptized in the Moses in the cloud and in the sea. That understanding is going to be given unto us according to what's written in Exodus chapter 13, verses 20 through 22. And Exodus chapter 14, verse 21, and we're going to take it from there. So let's get it, Israel. Okay. Christ said, whoso believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So we got to drink deeply of the word of God. And Christ will give us that understanding. Because he's our teacher. So let's go to Exodus chapter 13. Verse 20. The book of Exodus, when Israel came out of Egypt. Out of captivity in Egypt. The exodus of the 12 tribes of Israel. Out of the land of Egypt and the land of Ham. Exodus chapter 13, right? And let's get... Verse 20. Um, Exodus chapter 13, verse 20. And they took. So it says, uh, just bear with me. Okay, right here. Exodus 13, verse 20. And they, meaning the children of Israel, took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before this. So it said the Lord, the Most High, had an angel, which is Christ, went before them by day in a pillar of fire. I'm sorry, in a, in a, in a pillar of a cloud. So the Most High provided a way through Christ by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them. See, Christ led us the way. <laughs> and
and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. And he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the what? The people. What people? The children of Israel. So remember, we were reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, when Paul said, brethren, I would not that you should be, that you, uh, I, I would not that you should be ignorant. How that all our fathers pass under the cloud. So we're not to be ignorant about that cloud that led us by day when we came out of Egypt in the wilderness. We, when we are uh, into the edge of the wilderness, when we came out of Egypt. Okay, so we got the cloud part, right? Okay, let's go now. Cause so that what we just read that ties in what what, what, I, what we just read here. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers, Paul's brethren, the Israelites, were under the cloud. That's what we read in Exodus chapter thirteen. And now we're going to read the part and all pass through the Red Sea. Because by, by, by us being led under the cloud, guided by the cloud and all the children of Israel passing through the Red Sea, there was an experience that we all went through together. And that was what? How we were all baptized unto Moses. In the cloud and in the sea. What does that mean by we were all baptized unto Mo? What does that mean? How were we baptized unto? It didn't say baptized by Moses. It didn't say that. It didn't say baptized by Moses. When we passed through this Red Sea. It said we were baptized unto Moses. We were baptized unto Moses being our leader. That God had given us. In the cloud. And in the sea. So. Let's get it. Let's get the understanding. Let's go. To Exodus chapter 14. So we were in Exodus 13 to get the cloud part. Let's go to the 14th chapter. And let's go to Exodus chapter 14 verse 21. Exodus chapter 14. And verse 21. Bear with me. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 21. Here we go. All right. And Moses. Remember, tell, remember we read that we were all baptized unto Moses. Under the cloud and at the sea. When we pass through the Red Sea. Okay. What we're reading here is when Pharaoh's army was pursuing after the children of Israel. <laughs> and Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. Meaning the Red Sea. And the Lord caused. See the Most High through Christ. Caused the sea to go back. By a, a strong east wind all that night. So the Most High through Christ had caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind. See, that shows the Lord, he controls the wind. And it was all that night when we came out of Egypt and made the sea dry land. And the waters were what? Divided. So the Most High through Moses did a great powerful act in parting the Red Sea. That's what we're reading. The waters were divided. The Most High parted the Red Sea so that there was an actual wall of water on our right and a wall of water on our left. Who did God do this to? Moses. What was the Lord showing unto Israel that Moses is his chosen one? Just like God had shown unto us, the children of Israel, 
that Jesus of Nazareth is his chosen one. See, that's what we, that's, as we go through these scriptures, that's what these scriptures going to unfold. And Moses stretched, forth his, stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. So it's not just the whole Red Sea was dry land. It was dry land because, uh, in the path where Israel would walk on. But remember, it said the waters were divided. So there was an actual wall of water on our right and left. And we were going to walk through the, man, just picture that Israel, just picture that. Coming out of Egypt, Pharaoh's army is pursuing us all the way to the edge of, of, of the, the territory coming out of Egypt, a wilderness part, and what's at our back? The Red Sea. Israel was crying on the Moses, said, we going to die here. Look what's here, the, 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 the Red Sea. Is behind us, so that uh, you know they're they're um they're with the place where they thought that they would you know they were cornered into and, and died would be the very same place that the most I would provide salvation. How about that, Israel? They were backed up, their backs were against the wall of the Red Sea. And, and, and when you read it, tell us here. Um, let me just go down a few verses. Exodus 13 and uh, 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. Imagine Esau's army marching after us. And they were so what? afraid. We were afraid of the Egyptians that was marching after us. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? See what Israel said? Now we crying to the Lord, right? And then we saying that. That's double-minded right there. And they cried unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? <laughs> Because there was a mass burial going on in Egypt because the Most High killed the firstborn of both man and beast in the land of Egypt. So they're like, look, there's there were no graves in the land of Egypt. So you brought us out here in the wilderness to die. They blaming Moses because they're at the edge of the wilderness thinking where they're going to die that Moses brought them there to die. Wherefore hast thou dealt Thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt. Why are you dealing with us like this? Why would you do that to us? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt saying, let us alone. See what they said to Moses? Let us alone. They, didn't the, many of the children of Israel say the same thing? Let, let us alone. That we may serve the Egyptians. See, Israel wanted to serve the Egyptians. When Moses, most I raised them up to be their leader. They're like, leave us alone. We'd rather serve the Egyptians. Israel, that's why Jeremiah say, is Israel a, a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Israel loves captivity. They loved Egypt. They were like, Moses, nah, leave, leave us alone, man. We, we want to serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Man, we out here on the edge of the wilderness. It would have been better for us to, to serve the Egyptians as slaves and be oppressed than that we should die in the wilderness. Uh, living as a slave in Egypt is better than dying in the wilderness. Where, where did they get that the most high? He brought all them plagues upon Egypt. That he going to bring them in the edge of the wilderness to die. After the most high through most did all the great, mighty, powerful works in the land of Egypt. See what happens in adversity, Israel? Scripture say, "He that maketh uh, he that uh, maketh haste in the time of uh, this, uh, Ecclesiastes says, make not haste in the time of trouble.' See, so in the time of trouble, we made haste and we 
we were quick to, we quickly, um, um, hastily started to what? Think that the place where the, the cloud, here the, the tell us the cloud led us to this point, you know? And then, so now the most, that's why the Lord said, look, this, the son of man ain't come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. It's the same thing, Israel. So sometimes when we go through adversity, we think that's it. Oh, this is it. This is, uh, you know, I'm not meant for this or this is too hard. It, well, nothing is impossible with God, though. Nothing is impossible with God, the Most High, the Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, our Father. There's nothing hard with him, too hard for him. It's not hard for the Most High to deliver us. We're at the edge of the wilderness with the Red Sea behind us. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, stand still. He said, look, just hold, just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He said, look, just, you ain't got to do nothing. Sit still, watch and see the salvation of the Lord. See, so at the point that they thought they were going to die, God was going to bring salvation. So that's a lesson for us. At the point we think we're going to die and this is it and we, I don't got what it takes and the Most High's not with me, the Most High's forsaken me. Nah, Israel. We go through tests and trials. We go through adversity. The Most High be trying our faith to see whether we're going to cleave onto him or not. See? So never lose hope. You understand? Never ever lose hope. Fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. Today, God is going to show you salvation for the Egyptians, our oppressors, whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them, what? Again, no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. He said, look, Moses said, look, the most high going to fight this battle. You, you just hold your peace. In other words, you ain't going to do nothing. You're going to stand here and you're going to see the most high go to work for you. And the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. We lift up thy rod and stretch thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go through dry ground. Go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. So Moses was going to lift up this, his, his staff, his rod over the sea. And the Most High through Christ was going to divide it. That the children of Israel. See, so the Corinthians are who? The children of Israel. Remember when he said, moreover, brethren, I would not have you ignorant how that our fathers were under the cloud at all passed through the sea. So then Corinthians, they were, they were what nation? They were Israelites. This Bible is the book of the Israelites. We've been deceived and lied to. Not just by so-called bishops, elders, and deacons, and captains teaching us idolatrous man worship. We were also deceived in on um, the Christian uh, this world's Christianity, teaching us we're Gentiles, when we're Israel, teaching us that God could cast away his people. And now all nations is part of the, nah, lie, 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 lie. Bishop, elder, deacon, pastor, reverend, whatever. Most high is the truth. He's the truth. Christ came to give us the truth of the Father. Shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians. See, most of I'm, I'm a harden these Egyptians' hearts because they prideful anyway. I'm a harden their heart, and they shall follow them. So, in other words, the most I put this spirit on the Egyptians to chase us, and that's that's what we have to see in everyday life. If the most I put this spirit on, on on Edom today, and they try to do certain things against us, Israel, oh, what are we gonna do? You know, you're still going to do this and that. Oh, what are we going to do, brother? What do we got? Relax. Because whatever Esau going to do, that's the Most High sanctioning it. Just like the Most High hardened an Egyptian's heart to follow after us, the Most High raised them up in power to go after us like that so that 
and raising them up. He bring them down before our eyes so that the whole world know that the Most High is running this show through Christ. That we worry, oh, 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 the government going to do this and they going to do that. Force vaccinations, they going to do, uh, they're going to do, um, um, uh, what are they, FEMA camps and this and that. Oh my, what we, we got to leave America. We got to go to Jordan. We got to go, we got to go to Libya. We got to go to Egypt. Ah. We got to chill out. Like Mo said, Mo said, chill out. Stand back and see the salvation of God. Hold your peace and be still. Israel didn't even have to lift up a sword to take down these Egyptians because the Most High himself through Jesus Christ was going to take down these Egyptians. So always know that, Israel. The Most High going to fight our battles. And whatever Esau going to do, that's the Most High allowed him to do that. So why are we worried? And getting double-minded and getting shaky in the faith. Scripture says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, our strength is small. So no matter what happens, we have to say, look, this is the Most High's will. And you know what? This ain't no different than what the Most High did in Egypt when he hardened the Egyptian's heart. And if he, he raised them up in power to bring them down, look, Esau, all his tactics, all this stuff that he's trying to do, the Most High going to take them out. We ain't got to do with nothing. We're not going to fight against this government. We're not going to start a rebellion. We're not going to start a campaign. We're not going to vote. We're not going to start, oh, we need to start voting and we need to vote this and that and, 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 uh, you know, we need to go and, and, uh, we, we need to pack up and leave out it. All that, that's all lack of faith, Israel. What are we going to do when Esau do this and, and, and the chip and the microchip and the forced vaccination and, and he going to do that? Whatever they, we got to make sure we stay in these scriptures and the most I going to fight our battles. We got to make sure we don't sin against God and break his commandments. That's what we got to make sure we do. And we do that, then the Most High going to deliver us before our enemies. The same ones trying to hurt us, the Most High take them out. So don't worry when they rise up in power against us. The Most High did that. He did scripts tell you, he hardened Pharaoh's heart to bring him down so that the whole world would know that he's the one running this. That's why he's the Most High. And Satan and... um. His uh, ministers, which is Esau, the number one public enemy, number one of Israel and other nations, they minister to the Most High. And Christ, the, the scriptures tell us in Hebrews 1 that the, the world is, 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 by, is being ran by the word of, of the power of Christ. Christ is sitting on the right hand of God. All powers and authorities are subject to him in heaven and in earth. That includes Esau with his mighty military power, Russia, uh, 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 America, and China, the superpowers of the earth. Who, who, who will raise them up in power to do whatever that the Lord plan to do? The Most High through Christ, and they can't do nothing unless Christ sanction it. So if they rise up in power all together against us, we got the invisible power. The God that's to be worshipped in spirit. And when I say invisible, meaning, look, he's a spirit. He's a great spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So no matter what we go through, we got to reflect upon how the Most High delivered us in the past. What we don't want to do is reflect upon the past and where Israel lost faith. And then the Most High, they, they died in the wilderness because they lacked faith. The Most High going to fight our battles. We just got to stay in the spirit, Israel. We, we get double-minded real quick. We think the worst of every situation real quick. And then we, oh, oh how am I going to do this? How am I going to eat? How am I going to... And here the Most High has, Christ said that, this, that he had not, did not come to uh, destroy men's lives, but to save them. Christ said, it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. Fear not. But we fear him. Why? Because... If we fear in the day of adversity, our faith is small. So we have to check ourselves and humble ourselves, get in these scriptures and be like, man, look what the Most High did for our fathers. See, that's why Paul's saying, my brethren, be not ignorant. Don't be ignorant. Unlearn. Don't be without the understanding of how our fathers were under the cloud and guided of this cloud and all passed through the Red Sea. 
on dry land while the Egyptians were chasing us. Most I had them waters swallow them up once we passed through the Red Sea. And how we were all baptized under Moses being our leader. Don't, don't be ignorant of that. Because all this was for our learning in our faith and walk in Christ. Because we're to be baptized onto Christ now. And the Most High through Christ sitting on the right hand of God. Just like when we came out of Egypt in ancient time. The Most High worked through Moses. The Most High going to work through Christ. Well, Christ was there with the Father, with Moses. See? But Christ is that prophet like unto Moses. That we must all be baptized onto or into by repenting from our sins and being baptized in water under the power and authority of Jesus Christ that sitteth on the right hand of the Father. So that in this baptism of water, we're being joined onto the death burial of Christ and us coming out of that water, we're being joined onto the resurrection of Christ. And as Christ rose from the dead, we're to come out of that water repenting from our sins and we're to walk in newness of life and Christ is our life from that day forth. Don't lose sight of that. Let us not. Now let's get back to the scripture. And behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. So the most I put the spirit on the Egyptians to harden their hearts, Pharaoh, to not to refuse to let Israel go. And Pharaoh had a huge army of chariots and horsemen. And the Lord said, I'm going to get me honor upon Pharaoh. Just like the Most High going to get himself honor upon him when it's that day that the Most High sent Christ on the earth. Whatever superpowers or be that come up against the Most High's elect. Because that's what this is really all about. All this that's going on, this is about destroying the children of Israel. Okay. All this pandemic stuff going on. All this stuff going on. These are nations coming together against us. That's what this is really about. Oh, that, that they can't even deny a lot of things. It's not conspiracy theory no more. It's a it's conspiracy truth. According to the Psalms, about there's a conspiracy against the most high, against Christ, against the most high in Christ people. So in that day, man, we when 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 them nations be coming up against Israel, man, the Lord gonna come. And the feeble gonna be, oh. President such and such, and look at the look, look at the tanks and whatever they gonna have in that day. Look at the look at the fleet. Look at look at look at the helicopters and the, oh, we gonna die. And then the Lord busts out of the sky. <laughs> See, because all the nations they're against us. See, so it's saying, Behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. So the Most High is going to use Pharaoh, raise him up in power, his army, his chariots, and his horsemen, and the Most High is going to get honor. <laughs> Pharaoh thought he was going to get honor. Yeah, we're going to catch these Israelites. We're going to put them in slavery. No, you're going to die, Mr. Pharaoh. You, you're going to die. Your horse going to die. Your chariots. With them, with the horses leading the chariots and all the horse and the men, they all gonna die. See, but they thought they were gonna prevail. And who hardened their hearts? The Most High to come up against us. So when the nations come up against us, we gotta look at that's the Most High. You know what? Shoot, that, that means the Most High gonna deliver us. Not the opposite. We gonna die. That's how they were thinking. See how we got to change the way we think? We're supposed to be renewed in the spirit of, but we're not to be in the flesh no more. So we have to be faithful in the things that we're going through now. So when greater travail, greater adversities come upon us, you know, we, we'll, we'll learn from those past experiences to build us up to deal with even greater adversity. And not when we don't fail and fall short. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, just like these nations today. They're going to know the most high is the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh and his chariots and his horsemen. 
So the Most High raised them up in power to bring them down so that the Most High is known as the one that's running the earth and everything therein through Christ. And the angel of God, that's the, the, the messenger of God, that's Christ, which went before the camp, one camp, didn't have a, the camp of who? Israel, not the camp of uh, IUIC, GOCC, BOCC, ABC, uh, uh, Thug, uh, what do you got? Uh, ISUPK, GOCC, uh, no, the camp of Israel removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went before their face and stood behind them. And that's the Lord doing that. And it came to, between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these. So that the one could not come near the other all the night. <laughs> so, so, so the, the, the Egyptians chasing us by day, there's a cloud. It was that cloud was like so uh it was such a powerful cloud that like imagine a cloud you driving and it's in front of your car as you driving and you can't see before it. Okay. And then it uh and then there was a pillar of fire by night so the Egyptians couldn't uh approach us. See, so who controls the cloud and the fire? The wind, the most high. But Esau called it what? Oh, Mother Nature is unleashing her fury. See, that's the queen of heaven doctrine on all levels of society. You know, say mother nature. Where you read mother nature? I said the Lord's the one that brought the wind. Hurricane uh, Anna. Are we serious? Are we follow this? Oh, man, mother nature. There ain't no mother nature. Effeminate nature. Verse 21. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. Where you get mother nature? And made the sea dry land and the waters were what? Divided. Where you get mother nature? And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their what? Left. Imagine you walking through any sea, the Hudson River for y'all on the east coast. Or wherever, the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> and then there's a wall of water on your right and left. Well, that's what happened at the Red Sea in Egypt. Who did God do this to? Moses. So what we're experiencing, man, this man right here, Moses, he's the man. He's the chosen one of God. The Lord's dealing with him. Just like we're to see Christ in the same way. Moses was God's chosen one when we came out of captivity in Egypt. Jesus Christ is God's chosen one to deliver us from the bondage of sin, to deliver us from the bondage of our enemies. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground and the waters were a wall of water unto them on their right hand, on their left, and the Egyptians pursued and went after them to the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked upon the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. See, the most high going to trouble these nations that are going to try to hurt us. Yeah, they trying to do this. They trying to do that. And this, this and that. And the third. And you know what? The most high going to trouble them. The most high going to trouble our enemies that try to hurt us, man. And took off their chariot wheels. The Lord shooting them chariot wheels off the chariots. How about that? You ever see you ever drive on the highway and all of a sudden you see the, 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 the cars tied? <laughs> That's what the Lord did the Egyptians. And they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the sea and the waters may, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians and upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his what? Strength. Now we all know the power and virtue of, of, of the strength 
of the ocean. It, I, look, you ever been on the ocean? Somewhere out on Florida coast? And them powerful, the, 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 the waves, mm -hmm. return his strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it. But what happened? And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as what one of them, just like Moses said. So just like everything Moses said come to pass, came to pass, everything that Jesus Christ tells us will come to pass. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters wore a wall of water unto them on their right hand and on their left. Now check this out, Israel. Check this out. And the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. There go that word saved. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. So their bodies were washing up on the seashore. Now check this out. This is the whole point of how we were baptized under Moses. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses, which prefigured Jesus Christ. Because in the second Exodus, replaced Moses with Jesus Christ. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord God did through Christ did upon the Egyptians. And the people, meaning of Israel, feared the Lord. Now, remember, I tell you, the fear of the Lord is clean. Israel feared God and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. So we believed that Moses was the Lord's chosen one. We believed that. This verse is explaining how we were all baptized unto Moses by fearing God and believing in God, the Most High, through Christ, and his servant Moses, we were baptized of God unto Moses being our leader. So Exodus chapter 14, verse 21, is explaining how we were baptized unto Moses. Because what we experienced was we were in so much fear and belief of God, we were like, man, Moses I saw it. He, he lifted up the rod and he parted the Red Sea. Oh Lord, this is the man of God. I believe that God is his chosen one. So where we get through these so-called bishops, elders, deacons, jump that dad's talking about baptizing, but that's on when Moses gave us the law, statutes, command. When, when did the most I give Israel the 10 commandments? The Red Sea. He did not do. He did that at Mount Sinai, not the Red Sea. So we have to read scriptures in context. It's all praises to the Heavenly Father in Christ. We'll end it there for today's lesson. Okay, there's more to this lesson, but we're going to end it there. It's all praise to the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. So let me make one more last point. The same way we were all baptized under Moses, we're to be baptized under Jesus Christ. That's why the Most High himself said, hear ye him. This is my beloved son, hear ye him. And it tells you when Peter, John, and James heard that, that they, <laughs> it tells you that they were on the ground in fear. See? Because we're to be baptized under Jesus Christ. Meaning we're, we have to believe, just like our forefathers believed in God and believed in Jesus, I mean, believed in Moses, we are believing in the Most High and the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay? Um, but then, you know what? Let me just get one last point to prove that. Let's go to Romans 6 and 1.
Check this out. What shall we say? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So are we grace? Are we under grace? Yes. Are we saved by grace? Yes. But because we're under grace, that means we can continue in sin. That's the doctrine of, of this world's Christianity. Oh, you don't have to keep, you don't have to keep the Sabbath. You don't have to follow the dietary laws. You don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. You don't have to keep any commandments. That's the law of Moses. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Shall we continue? In sin meaning, shall we continue to murder, commit adultery, fornicate, put tattoos on our bodies, round the corners of our heads and beards, make baldness between our eyes and, and, and uh, make, uh, shave off our eyebrows, whatever it may be, so on and so forth, that the grace that Christ gave us through his death on the cross, may abound unto us continuing in sin. God forbid, meaning no. How shall we, meaning Paul himself and the rest of the Israelites in Rome, that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Paul is saying, look, we're, we are dead to sin. How are we continuing to live any longer therein in sin? Now he's going to give us a physical example of how we are dead to sin and we're not to live anymore therein. Know ye not, meaning... Don't you know that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, remember we were baptized unto Moses, now we're to be baptized into Jesus Christ. There's an ordinance that, a commandment, I'm going to say, that Jesus Christ gave us that's symbolic of that. And what is that? Water baptism. What is it symbolic of? Of being baptized into his death. So when we're baptized in water, confessing our sins like Paul himself, according to Acts 9.18, was baptized in water. See? Paul himself was baptized in water. So he's including himself in the Israelites in Rome being baptized. That's why I said, know you not so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ. So was Paul, Saul of Tarsus, baptized in water into Jesus Christ in that baptism? Yes. What about the Israelites that he was addressing in Rome? Yes. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Meaning when we were baptized in water, we were spiritually being baptized into his death. So that's why, why that's why Ananias told uh, um, um, Paul a, a, a heavy thing. He said, look, he said, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized, calling on the name of the Lord. Wash away thy sins. And I just told him, look, what are you wait? Don't put it off, brother. Get in that water and get baptized. Call on the name of the Lord. Before Paul began his ministry in, in, in the apostleship of Christ, he had to repent and be baptized. Because unless a man is born of water and the spirit, he shall not see the kingdom of God. So when Saul of Tarsus got baptized in water, the old man, Saul of Tarsus, he was dead and buried in that water. Paul, the man coming out of that water, Paul, our brethren, that was Christ in him. The old man, that, that man was dead and buried in that water. His sins washed away. Knowing that, that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized unto his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into what? Death. So we're being baptized in water, confessing our sins spiritually. It's like we're being joined onto his death. So that's why when we immerse in that water going in backwards, it's like a burial, a spiritual burial, a burial of the old man. That's what Paul's point is and what he's saying here. When he's saying, shall we continue in sin that grace be abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And then he says what? 
Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death, including himself. That's why it's important for us to read when he said not that so many of us as were baptized. So if Saul of Tarsus got baptized, how are we not getting baptized? Are we, are we better than Paul? Do we got something better than Paul that we ain't got to get baptized? No, we have the same faith that Paul had. Repent and believe in Christ. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised from the dead. So Jesus Christ was raised from the dead three days and three nights after his burial because it was not possible that he should be holding of death. Neither his body suffered corruption in the grave, but he that knew no sin became sin for us, that we may be made the righteousness of God in him, meaning in Jesus Christ. That's why we're to be baptized into Christ. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of what? Life. So if we're walking in newness of life, Paul's point is, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer than And Then he brings out something that we did outwardly in faith that's spiritually tied to Christ's death, burial, and his resurrection from the dead. Christ rising from the dead is symbolic of us when we come on that water, walking in what? Newness of life. So we walking in newness of life, how are we continue in the murder, fornicate, Commit adultery, serve other gods, break the Sabbath, doubt God. No. So what's the conclusion of this lesson? As we were all baptized unto Moses, our fathers, we're to be baptized unto Christ. Just like our forefathers believed, they, we feared and believed the Lord and his servant Moses, we're to, we're to fear and believe God and his son, Jesus Christ. All praise to the Heavenly Father. Well, there's more scriptures on this lesson, but we'll end it there. So all praise to the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that sitteth on the right hand of the Father in heaven. That has given us these scriptures to believe in and to walk in and enduring to the day that Christ come, whether that's in our lifetime or not. If we die in the faith, it don't matter. We're going to be shared. We're going to share in the resurrection of Christ. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also, we, we shall be also in the likeness of what? His resurrection. So, so that resurrection, uh, that old man being dead and buried in that water and us walking in the newness of life. That's symbolic of, of something even greater. When Christ come back, he going to raise our mortal bodies to be made immortal. All right, so we'll end it there. So all praise to the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth. Uh, peace and blessings, Israel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the fellowship. Uh, we appreciate y'all. Don't forget, tomorrow night at sundown is the new moon, the new month. To all the churches, the church uh, out in Boston, uh, Florida, Jacksonville, and uh, out here in uh, Phoenix and um, in uh, Los Angeles. We're going to have the fellowships, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the lessons on, 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 in scriptures go out. Okay, so be, stay tuned. And the brother Israelite Alabama is, will share all that info. All right. So peace and blessings, Israel. Most high Christ bless you all.
It's all about the prophet like unto Moses. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. We were all baptized into the fear of God and his servant Moses as God's chosen one. As Jesus Christ of Nazareth today is his chosen one, and there is no successor, there is no rival to Christ. Christ is sitting on the right hand of God and the world is being ran by the word of his power. That power is given unto him of the father, the same power and glory that he had with God before the world was John 17 and five.